Uh, well, with me now, Ash Atala, producer of The Office, perhaps best known for that, and for several programmes for BBC Three. Tessa Jowell, the former Culture Secretary, who was there at the birth of BBC Three. And David Elstein, who launched Channel Five. Welcome uh, to you all. And Ash, we saw um, some of the programmes there. And of course, the titles are always, um, I guess, the grabbiest bit of, of, of what um, BBC Three did. But give us a sense from your perspective of what made it so vital. Well, I think today the BBC, who I'm a friend of, have had a really bad bad day at their office. Um, today they have cut their link to the future. So um, BBC Three is the main plank at which the BBC connect with their on television with the youth audiences. And today it feels like a 60 year old man when a golf jumper has just walked into a really good nightclub and turned the music off uh, uh, so he can hear more Mozart next door. I, I am really I'm actually slightly embarrassed at what's happened today. Quite surprised as well. It's all been quite fast. Of course, they'd say he hasn't turned the music off. He's just put it on iPlayer. Will, will the next generation go to iPlayer for I mean, that? I, I, I think it sends out a really bad message that the youth market should just be shoved online. I mean, we're all online now. And I think, actually, the statistics, unfortunately, don't even bear it out. A BBC Three audience watches linear television. Um, it's a slightly middle-aged, older man's um, perception that kids are simply online. Mm. Actually, they like to watch TV in the way that we all do. Tessa Jar, you had doubts about it from the start, but this seems to sort of throw it into a rather stark light that, that you know, we've given up on it. Well, I think, you know, I, I take very seriously what um, Asha said. And when I was Secretary of State and I was... Um, asked to approve two new channels in 2002, BBC uh, Four, which has been very successful, BBC Three. I turned back the first submission for BBC Three because I just thought it was insubstantial, implausible, and wouldn't add anything to the BBC. However, the then Director General and Chairman of the Governors were passionate um, for all the reasons that Ash is now giving about the importance of there being a BBC channel that appealed to 16 to 34 year olds. It's quite a wide and it uh, got demographic, there, didn't it? Well, they took it away, they reworked it, it came back, it was a much better proposal. And on that basis, I approved it. And I think the important question is actually the one which Ash has put, which is, uh, does this mean that the BBC is sort of giving up on mainstream connection with 16 to 34 year olds? Yeah, I mean, David, I, I imagine that image of the middle aged man in the golf jumper will have BBC execs kind of reaching for the sink at this point. Well, the, <laughs> it, it, the irony is even stronger than Ash imagines because uh, all the savings uh, that might be made out of BBC Three will have to be applied to filling the hole in the BBC pension fund. So it's BBC pensioners who will benefit from uh, these cuts more than anybody else. But it, look, the truth of the matter is this. Uh, the BBC is in a financial fix. Um, the coalition cut 16% of its spending power in October 2010. And the pigeons are coming home to roost. Something has to go. Uh, they tried salami slicing, bits off everything. Everything gets worse. And Tony Hall announced uh, last week at the Oxford Media Convention, uh, I'm going to make a big cut. Uh, we assumed it was merging BBC Two and Four. It turns out it's taking BBC Three. Why do you think it wasn't Two and Four then? Uh, well, I think the, the simple I mean, they're reason much more is economics. Right. It, it's just that of all, of the of the BBC channels, this is the least effective in converting cash into viewership. It's as basic as that. So, Ash, you've said it's slightly patronising to think that a whole youth um, audience will just go to iPlayer. Do you think this is a temporary grave, then, before it gets axed completely? Or do you think iPlayer could, you know, come into its own like a, a Netflix? I mean, look, uh, iPlayer is brilliant, but it, it is inexplicable that they've chosen to ax BBC Three as opposed to BBC Four. I'll tell you why, because a service like the BBC has to look at, they need to serve everyone, the BBC. I understand that it's difficult. I'm also pragmatic, they need to make cuts. However, a BBC Four audience can migrate to BBC Two. A BBC One audience serves the whole family. A BBC Three audience who have been cut adrift today have nowhere else to go on BBC television. They have been today marginalised. And let me tell you something else that's worse. Today, BBC has got whiter, older and more middle class because it's the BBC Three audience that is the most diverse of all the BBC channels. And I guess 
the, the problem always was that it felt like it was on commercial territory. There were all the fours that could do that, the, the Channel 4s that could do well, that, there is, were the MTVs. No, you, you, exactly. I mean, I mean, and this is, I suppose, you know, one of the ways in which the decision is made easier. But we knew that, I knew that, when um, I gave approval to the Channel, that it is, you know, a, a sort of crowded marketplace. There are other, other channels serving this. But the important thing about this was that this is the BBC serving this uh, population of young people. I'm just trying to get a sense from you though, when you signed it off and you were very clear that you didn't like the first proposal, did you always sign it off thinking this is doomed? Uh, no, I, I, I didn't um, because I was persuaded by the by Greg Dyke's advocacy and the important and it's a you know it's a compelling case that the BBC you know our great institution national institution has got to keep on kind of replacing you know the the people the, you know the license fee payers who die um, and extend its reach to much younger people I mean I do actually Emily say and this is a slightly off piece point on this I think the BBC has um, sometimes just got to say to the government this is the license fee payers money it's not part of your spending round it comes from a different source and license fee payers pay 145 but, but what should they have done pounds. with with things now I mean are you saying this should shouldn't have been the decision that was taken today. Um, I mean, you I, say it's a compelling argument, but I can't work out whether you're saying it's, no, uh, it was the wrong move. And actually, I think, wait and see whether the audiences do migrate, these young people do migrate uh, to iPlayer. But wait and see is too late, isn't it? If they don't, no, where, I'm, where on earth listen, do you get them back? I'm then? not saying, I, I, I'm, I'm not saying uh, defend BBC3 at all costs. What I am saying is that you have to find another way if the BBC wants to continue to appeal to younger people of doing that or give up on that mm. cause altogether and that would be a great pity. What a strange thing to give up on young people. What a strange thing to marginalise young people of all the channels, of all the services. What a weird message to say to the licence fee payers of tomorrow, there is no television channel aimed at you anymore. Well, there's plenty of television channels aimed at them. You know, E4 is much more efficient at delivering 16 to 34s, and it's publicly owned. You know, if we're going to spend public money on reaching 16 to 34s, we'd be better off spending the 85 million pounds there. But, but can you save no... this money by putting it on iPlayer? Of course not. Uh, if you're putting, I mean, the, putting any of the 85 million pound budget into online programming is bound to be even more ineffective in terms of delivering viewers. Uh, than the current situation. The, the correct answer is inject more of this investment in uh, programmes that appeal to young people in BBC One. It's a generalist channel. Long before BBC Three and Four were ever thought of, the BBC was brilliant at delivering comedies that appeal to all ages. Do you think it will actually go? I mean, but given... I, think, I, th I think what's important is candour about responsibility uh, for that group of license fee payers. And I mean, as far as I'm concerned, I, mean, I don't feel wedded to the continued existence of BBC Three. I do feel wedded to the BBC believing it has a responsibility for those younger people yeah. and not simply saying, well, we'll close down BBC Three and really whether or not uh, you know, young people go to iPlayer is not a matter of concern to you, us. But you've got, Tessa, you've got to have another plan you know, the, the, the BBC Trust is going to have to adjudicate on this after it's announced tomorrow. It may take them several months, but I don't see how they can veto it unless they've got a better way of yeah, saving the okay. money that Tony Hall yeah. wants to save. Well, That's the problem the BBC yeah. has. Thank you. Shortage of cash. Thank you all very much. Thanks for coming in.